Alright. Well, welcome back, friends. Phantom Force, Cosmox fans. This is Phantom Base coming at you with our week number six. IBL Season 5 Team Prep. Your New York Cosmox are taking on the Colorado Mammoth Swans after quite the interesting loss last week. Um, those of you who know me know how I feel about this battle. And those of you who don't know that battle, and those of you who don't know me, well... Let's just say that I, part of me feels like I should still be, should still be undefeated. So, we'll not discuss that much more though. So anyway, let's go into the team we're facing this week. Um, Eric is a good buddy of ours, so um, his link will be. In, I mean, obviously his link will be in the description below, as everyone's. And team matchup should show up right about now. Actually, you know what? I messed up. There is a different mod on my team, and there used to be. Let's change that, shall we? Not like it makes a difference, but you know what? Here we go. The change should show up right about now. There. All right, so that being said, welcome to this team builder. If you guys don't know how I do team preps, um, what I do is I try to show you my thought process and everything on how I build this team. So you'll see right there, we're gonna assess some threats. We're gonna establish how we build, how we build this team and um, the yeah, let's go from there. So let's take a look at his team. First off, we noticed that um, he's got Coco and Lu Coco Lucha, which is incredibly horrifying to deal with. Um, he's got Mega Agron, which is a fat lord. And he's also got um, like Zygarde 10, which outspeeds most of our team, as well as all the Persia, which is kind of frustrating to deal with. And his hazard, remo his hazard removal is interesting. So that's kind of the thing that I see here. He's got some decent answers to Cartana and the likes of Arcana and, and Roselia. But other than that, he doesn't really have huge, and maybe Agron, but he doesn't really have huge good answers for it. And his uh, hazard removal slash spin blocking is kind of mostly weak to Cartana. So uh, anyway, that's kind of my thoughts looking at this team. Also, his hazard setters are literally three, and they're all weak to the same thing, just about. They all died to Cartana, but um, he's got his his rock setters are like a rock, Claydol and Mega Agron, and his uh he's got spikes and toxic spikes and Roselia. His removal is Coco Lucha and Claydol, and that's it. So really, his only hazard removal is Claydol. So if he doesn't bring that, I pretty much guarantee he's not bringing hazard removal. Anyway, that being said, we're gonna look into my team and kind of assess what my threats are versus him. First off, my Aerodactyl goes ham this yeah, this match. Straight up. Also, Toxifex kind of walls this entire team. And um And a good look at his speed tiers also tell me that Hydreigon does a huge number to his team. Because the things that I need to outspeed with Hydreigon, I can outspeed while being modest. So that's kinda of how we're gonna go go with this. And we're gonna go straight into our first mon of the build. And that mon is actually Mega Aerodactyl. Oh, uh, we've got Skyfall. We'll be returning once again for her next match. And right away, I knew the coverage I wanted to listen. I wanted Stone Edge, I wanted EQ, Aerial Ace, and all. And actually, no, I didn't know it right away. No, I did. I, want, I knew I wanted Crunch. And this spread was really easy for me to figure out because um, it's kind of simple. But it kind of gets the job done. We're running an adamant near max speed because that was allows. That's what allows us to out creep, out speed, top of Coco outright. Thought about creeping him, creeping my Swoobat, but um, I thought better of it because I didn't want to risk him potentially just randomly running a max speed set to throw me off. So I couldn't risk that when an earthquake is a one shot on that thing. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all for that one. Nothing too crazy. Uh, Crunch is specifically for played all and um. Claydol and for um, Jellison, because I'm not about to sit there and let them get in front of me for free. Um, when I got Edge, when I got Edge Quake, which are resisted by, resisted and or immune by Claydol, and Jellison can shoot a hit anyway. Crunch still two hit kills both of them, so that's it's good. And Aerial Ace is to kill off um, Holucha, because even a plus one defense Holucha still is two hit KO by 
Aerial Ace. So, and then the only thing about this is it does get killed by a plus two Halucha, but I do have another Mon on my team that is not. And we'll talk about that one in a minute, but first. And actually, we'll talk about that one in a second. But for next up, I wanted to have an answer for Tapu Koko. These are the things, let me discuss to you really quick the things that I needed to make sure I had answers for. I need to have an answer for Tapu Koko, I need an answer for Halucha, and I need an answer for Zygarde 10. Right away, an offensive answer to Zygarde 10 is our um, Aerodactyl because we do two shot with Aerial Ace, as well as um, potentially Earthquake. Earthquake after rocks, Aerial Ace regardless. Um, and I feel like he's going to run max speed to outspeed my Swoobat. Swoobat forces a lot of prep in this game, even though I don't bring it, or I haven't brought it yet. It forces prep because it's speed tier is just annoying enough to be, and its coverage is just annoying enough to make it prep, make it make you prep for it. But in order to fill one of my requirements, I needed a check or a counter really to um, Tapu Koko, and that is going to be my pilot swan. We are running an oblivious pilot swan this week, I believe. Yes, with EQ, Ice Shard, Rocks, and Roar. Not Rage, that'd be crazy, but Roar. And we knew the spread. We kind of, well, really, the main thing I knew right then, right now is I wanted this particular EV investment because I wanted to make sure that I was not to KO by a timid specs grass knot from uh, from Tapu Koko because Tapu Koko has to run timid to outspeed my swoop at. If you want, if he's gonna run modest, then that means he could potentially either be outsped by my swoop at or he'll 100% be outsped by my Aerodactyl. But, um, and also on top of that, that means he's creeping a creep, which, while it makes sense, it's not the best considering Swoobat, I would, I don't, I wouldn't creep his, um, I wouldn't creep his rock type with my Swoobat, because there's no point, he's, his rock type has priority Accelerate Rock, which blows away Swoobat anyway, so it doesn't make any sense. Oh, but before we forget, let's go, give me Mini Raider. Now. This is all we knew at this point, is this particular spread. No. Uh, the next set we have, we kind of thought of as one of our win conditions, slash, no way to break through his team. And really a couple of these mods are, can reverse roles as it goes. Um, Aerodactyl can potentially clean late game, um, be a win condition. Kartana, on the other hand, is a potential all out win condition. We knew this set right off the bat. Running Sacred Sword, Leaf Blade, Psycho Cut, and Sword Stand. And I'll tell you why Psycho Cut over Knockoff here in just a second. But we knew this exact spread as well because I spent forever calculating this. As you will see right here, this is the money spread. This allows us to not be too KO by Timid Specs, uh, Tapu Koko, Dazzling Gleam. Uh, HP Fire or Thunderbolt. We might as well forget about trying to live two of those. But um, that's what we have Pilot Swan for. And we can set up a Sword Stance and kill um, pretty much anything. Plus two, uh, Phytinium Z kills a Spit F Mega Aggron after Rocks. If he's Fizz Def, um, then we got a hold of the ball game, but I doubt he'll be that. Um, just because uh, if he is that, then he can't check my Hydreigon, which is another mod that we came up with. But let's go ahead and explain this rep. This is the highest amount of speed I can run. Well, this is the lowest amount of attack I can run with the highest amount of speed. I was trying to make sure that we got the, uh, the speed boost, not the attack boost. And it still allows us to outspeed Arcanine outright, which is great. That's what we need. Um, I couldn't run any less speed, though. Because if I ran less speed, then I would be getting an attack boost, which is a problem. So, and this could force him into a situation where if I get a speed boost up against something like... Um, up against something like his Zygarde, I can come, then all of a sudden he's got to come in with, um, instead of coming in with Coco, if he's not Scarred, he has to come in with um, Arcanine to potentially try to re revenge me. And if I've already killed off Aggron at that point, even a minus one, um, even a minus one um, Titanium Z, like if he's taking a lot of chip, I believe it still kills. Like, it, it's ridiculous how strong this thing is. But, um, we're gonna go into that a little bit more later. Really, this is the spread that I wanted. This lets me kind of check. This really lets me check. Um, Claydol. This lets me check. 
Top of Coco. Yeah, this lets me check. Um, a few of his weaker, more passive mods. Things like, um, things like, let's just check Lycan Rocket. Let's just check um, Roselia to an extent. HP Fire, Roselia is so the closest way. But, um, like, it helps us check Jellicent. And he, but he's going to be taking HP Fire on a lot of stuff. So really, just we can come in for free pretty much on Zygarde. And, um, to an extent, Tapu Koko, depending on his item. If he's Scarfed, we actually can potentially live three, or uh, two Thunderbolts and three Dazzling Gleaves, or, th or three Dazzling Gleaves. That's great. Um, so yeah. But like I said, Hydreigon has to come this match. And I'll explain to you why. I definitely came up with this set really quickly. Because, uh, there was no reason for me to run anything else. So, this coverage, with this particular speed investment, this particular, um, yeah, it's just chaotic what we can do with this thing. I think I actually did run, yeah, I ran this like this, so I gotta have a, um, life orb number. And we are modest, because we are going to creep an adamant, we are creeping an adamant Arcanine. Because that also allows us to creep anything else on this team, that's below me speed tier wise. There's no, there's no reason for him to run Jolly Arcanine. There's zero reason for him to run Jolly Arcanine. If he runs Jolly Arcanine, he's insane. And he won't get the damage he needs. Because Adamant Arcanine is the best way he has to potentially to kill my Aerodactyl with Wild Charge. And Adamant Arcanine is the only way he can to kill my Toxic Effect. Because anything other than Adamant Arcanine, unless he's banded, cannot to kill Toxic Effects with Wild Charge. So that's that's fun things to think about. Um, Earth Power two shot this with this spread. Earth Power two shots a Spidef, um, Mega Agron. We can also um, we also obviously one shot freaking um, Top Coco. We one shot Clay Doll. We one unless he's Assault Vest. We one shot Jellicent unless he's Assault Vest. Um, the only thing I'm worried about with those two mods is them potentially having Dazzling Gleam. Cause that could be a real really big problem for my Hydreigon. Cause normally this thing is meant to check them, right? Well, not if they got Dazzling Gleam. No. Good thing is we can kind of pivot into our, um, we can kind of pivot into our, um, uh, Cartana because we're so spidef heavy and pit and scout for the potential fact that if he's, if they're Culberberry and they're running Dazzling Gleam, We'll know it, and we can just kill him off a of leaf blade because both of them are weak to grass as well as weak to dark, which is great. That's why I built this team the way I did. Um, next up, we this helps us kind of check. Like I said, we have our check for Arcanine now. One of our checks for Arcanine. This thing comes in pretty much for free on Arcanine unless he's running close combat. Um, we've got our check for Coco. Next up, like I said, we needed another check for. I wanted a, I wanted a defensive check for Arcanine as well as a straight up counter to Holija. And this is what our Toxpex is going to do. We are running Black Sludge yet again. Of course, we're running Regenerator. With Scald, Toxic T Spikes, um, Haze, and Recover. And we have to run this exact spread. I hate that. I hate running max max spreads because I feel like I'm wasting EVs. But in this particular instance, I'm actually not. Because what this allows me to do is I guarantee to take a plus two acrobatics into an acrobatics after I've hazed it. So I cannot switch this thing into Hallucha, but if I can get it in when he sets up the sword stance, I can click Haze as he clicks Acrobatics, and if he clicks Acrobatics again, I can recover and essentially beat him 1v1 that way. Um, so yeah, that's that's the whole point behind Toxic Mix. It's not really anything crazy, but it also gives me a, a very easy switch into um, Mega Agron. Adamant Mega Agron can't do a kill me with um, Earthquake. Adamant Mega Agron actually cannot do a kill my um. Hydreigon with Heavy Slam either, so and I expect him to have Fire Punch instead of Ice Punch for my um, Cartana, because if he has Cartana, if he does have Fire uh, Ice Punch, he actually can't beat Cartana, and we can beat it, because he has to have Heavy Slam, he has to have Earthquake, and he has to have either Fire Punch or um, Roar, and then Stealth Rocks. I know he's bringing Stealth Rocks on that mod, because he likes to use Clay Doll for other things. So, that's that's Toxpix. Toxpix, that's literally his only job, is just to, to beat Agron and Lucha. And if I need to, I beat Arcanine with it too. Last mana, we needed a check to Zygarde 10, as well as a, a secondary check to Hall Lucha. 
This thing doesn't switch in nearly as well as Toxapex does, but it does a pretty decent job of beating those kind of things down. It also gives me a kind of sort of solid check to, um, really what this thing is meant to do is just pivot in. Scare. It's, meant, it's my check to a Lolan Persian, essentially. Because it's meant to check that, get me a nice wish up, and keep my team healthy, free of status. And that's Roma Tease. Our first, this is her debut. I believe this is Megan's debut. I know she's changed face a little bit. We are running a leftover set with a Roma Veil, so we can't be taunted. We got Wish Protect, Moon, Moon Blast, and Roma Therapy. We've got this exact spread because literally I, when I build these teams, guys, you got to understand. I sit down and I just kind of build each mon. When I come up with their spread, when I know what their function is, I come up with their spread instantly. Because I know what I want them to do. Except for Pilot's one there. I had to see the whole team together to do that. Now, this is Aromatis' job is to take on a Lolan Persian. Give me some wishes up in the air. Keep my air... Keep my Aerodactyl healthy in particular because if I don't keep it healthy, it, I didn't bring Reliable Recovery this week. I needed four attacks to make sure I could check his entire team. Or not his entire team, but the mons that I needed this to check, I needed to do it efficiently. So I couldn't afford to not bring Earthquake. I couldn't afford to not bring Stone Edge. I could not afford to not bring Aerial Ace. And I definitely couldn't afford to not bring Crunch. So I needed those four moves on it, which is why I have, which is why I'm bringing Cleric this week. Um, so yeah. Uh, with this special attack investment, it allows, me, it allows me to 2 8 KO max HP Ola Persian. But we can also potentially one shot, um, we can potentially um, 2 8 KO, or we, of a bulky or Zygarde, we two shot still. Um, there are other things. Okay, there are other things that we beat with this thing. Um, we can two shot Lycanroc actually, and we still two shot Halbucha. If it's a bulky max HP Halbucha, we still two shot it, which is great. Because uh, that makes this thing not free setup. Yeah. This gave me some freedom to run a particular set in my Pilots one that I'm actually very proud of. You're running this exact set. Because this four could allow us to potentially speed tie with an aggron running like four speed in it. And this particular attack investment allows us to one shot any variant, allows us to guarantee one shot any variant of um, Zygarde with Ice Shard. Forcing him to go for extreme speed versus me, which is not a two hit kill, even if he's at plus one. So that's great. Um, EQ is still a nice way to hit Agron because um, it, it deals solid damage. Um, EQ also, like I said, blows away Zappa Coco. Um, more fun factors with the spread EQ into Shuka, Tapu Coco with after, after Rocked. Shuka nerfed EQ into Ice Shard does kill Top of Coco with the spread, which is really nice to think about. So it's kind of all I really have for this team. Um, you can kind of see the, the prep I have, the, the plan I have for this team. It's more balanced build, which is nice. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Catch you guys next time.